So thank you again for attending today's Career Readiness Series event titled Researching and Negotiating Salary and Benefits. My name is Josh Domachovich, the Executive Director of the Center for Career and Professional Development, and my co-host today, Diana Brush, our Associate Director, are excited to introduce you to Ashley and Brooke from AHN, and I'll let them introduce themselves before we get started and they take the presentation away. So Ashley, go ahead. Thank you, Josh. Hi, everyone. Great to be here today. My name is Ashley Roberts. I am one of the um, talent acquisition managers with the Allegheny Health Network here in Pittsburgh. Awesome. And my name is Brooke Zelt. I'm a campus recruiter with Highmark Health and AHN. Um, I've been at the organization for a little over three months now, and I am really just super excited to be here with you all today. Although I'm not presenting, Ashley will be presenting today. I will be here to just um, help, you know, offer support and monitor the chat for any questions. So thanks so much, guys. And Ashley, I'll pass it back over to you. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, so we are going to keep this as casual as we can today, guys. This is one of those topics, right, that is hot on everybody's mind when you are graduating and looking for a job. Um, so as Josh had mentioned, you know, as the slides progress, if you do have questions along the way, um, don't hesitate to, you know, raise your hand, speak up, put them in the chat, and we will try to answer them um, as we go along. So let's go ahead and get started. So when you're, when you are out looking for a job, there's a couple things that you're going to want to keep in mind, right? And this happens, you know, before I guess you would say that you're looking. So you know your worth. If you are looking for a position that is in the field related to what you are currently, you know, graduating in or that you've worked in before, um, I think the biggest thing to look at is what is your previous experience with that? Are there certain accreditations that you have done um, that are a one up on, you know, something above and beyond. So did you get a certificate in that certain area? Have you done an internship in that certain area? So there's things that can add to that worth and certainly um, things that are good to put on your resume. So things that are, you know, going to stand out that might put you a leg up on some competition. Um, when you're doing market research, for salaries, there's different things to look at. So if you're looking in a particular area, for instance, if you're living in Pittsburgh or Pennsylvania um, and you're looking at ranges, you can look on Google, you can look on Glassdoor, you can look on some certain outlets that show what the market range is for that particular position. Um, obviously the range is gonna be different depending on where you're living. So if you're looking for a position in California, um, or New York, or one of Washington, D.C., and some of those areas that may have a higher cost of living, that is going to take into account um, when you're looking at that average. So if you're looking at rates in California and you're saying, well, you know, I want a job in Pennsylvania, and you're saying, well, I saw that the market range was, you know, 60 to 70,000 in California, it may not be relevant to the market that you're looking in. So something to pay attention to is definitely location. Um, you know, industry, experience level, education. So those are all pieces of this very intricate puzzle. Um, and when you're thinking about a compensation package, also just realize, and we'll get into this in the slides to come, that sometimes it's not full picture of just the salary. Um, sometimes that comes along with the benefits that go along with that particular company. You know, um, 401k match, PTO, benefits as far as medical, dental, and vision. So all of those may be important um, and especially important when deciding, you know, okay, what's the right salary range for me and how does this fit into my expectation? When to negotiate. This is always a fun topic, right? Because, you know, you don't want to start too early. I can tell you one, a big dissatisfier with recruiters and hiring managers in general is you know, if out of the gate, you know, you haven't even had a discussion yet about your skill set and you're already asking about that. So there's there's a time here that you need to obviously present yourself and put your best foot forward um, and have that conversation with them, you know, along the way. So, um, you know, sometimes and most recruiters and managers at this point in time, they will present you with what the salary looks like when you're initially talking to them. 
Sometimes they don't and that's okay. But a lot of times in today's market, they are telling you that they're, you know, there is a range that they are trying to hire within. So you kind of have that before you even walk into the door. So you know, okay, this is something that I might be able to make work um, as far as a range goes. And this is a company that I would still like to pursue. Um, you know, in other times, if they don't present that and you are very interested, you know, you follow the interview process through. Um, and then you can certainly talk to them, you know, at the time of offer. So that's really the time to negotiate. The time to negotiate and go back and forth on numbers is really once they give you that offer in hand, because I will promise you, there's no employer out there that once they give you an offer that they're going to take it off the table if you are wanting to negotiate your salary. I think that a lot of times comes with the expectation that, you know, candidates are more than likely going to do that. Um, so something to definitely be fair to yourself. Um, now, you know, get organized, take a moment to organize your thoughts, think about what matters to you, um, develop talking points, you know, be ready for the unexpected. So just be ready to have that conversation. And naturally, you know, these things are best done over the phone. So, um, you know, although the final piece you are, and we'll go over this, you'll probably want to get in writing. Um, you know, it's best to kind of have that dialogue back and forth because you're really, again, you're showcasing kind of what maybe somebody might have missed. Um, you know, if there is room for negotiation, you know, it's kind of just better to have that dialogue back and forth. Um, this is always a good one because sometimes, you know, again, and when you're talking to a hiring manager, you're talking to a recruiter, sometimes you can get a little bit, you know, flustered. It can be a little bit intimidating, especially if you don't do it all the time. So, um, it's not silly to do this, but you can certainly practice with somebody, practice with a friend or family member, you know, practice your talking points. And it's, if it's somebody that knows you best, they may be able to point out things too that you haven't thought of. So if they know that you carry a certain aspect or, oh my gosh, you didn't mention that you did this. And then a light bulb goes off and you're like, oh my gosh, that's right. I did do that. So that's always good to do. Um, you know, pinpoint a number and back it up, you know, next to that says avoid salary ranges. You don't necessarily, if you want to be at a certain number and you know that's your end all, to give a salary range, some companies, not all, but some companies may look at that and say, okay, well, they might be willing to accept the latter, right? They're willing to accept something that's a little bit lower. So you want to be fair to yourself. If your number is your number, stick to that, right? So, you know, don't necessarily give a range. Um, obviously ask for everything in writing. Once you get an offer and if it's something that you are, um, you know, comfortable with, you obviously want to see that in writing. You want to see an offer letter. You want to see everything that comes across with that and be confident. You know, you know what you have to offer. You know what you bring to the table, um, you know, and you know what an asset you're going to be to the team that you're joining. So definitely be confident when you're, when you're talking to people and talking about this, because it's something that, you know, you don't have to shy away from, right? It's all very important. Um, you know, the don'ts, don't practice too much. You don't want to sound rehearsed. I know that there was a girl that I actually worked with before uh, years and years ago, probably my first job before even college. And I remember she was getting a new job and she was trying to write out what she was going to say. And she, I'm like, are you going to read that to them? You know, and, and she was like, well, no points, but she had it written out. And then I heard her reading it to them. And I'm like, this was very much for her. So they, they probably picked up on that as well. Um, and again, avoid sharing your current salary. It's okay to deflect from that question. And, and I can tell you this because if you box yourself sometimes in to a rate, there could be so much more potential of a higher rate that now you've boxed yourself in, right? So you can kind of let the manager or the recruiter kind of guide that conversation, give you ranges, give you things like that, but you don't over overly nest over. What am I trying to say? You don't necessarily need to overshare um, because again, sometimes that can just pinpoint you into a corner that you know it could have been so much more. So. I just wanted to point out to everybody that they can actually practice with somebody from their school's career center. I believe that is something that um, your school offers and Diana might be able to speak to that a little bit later, but just wanted to call that out. Great call. Great call. Absolutely. I, Ashley, I just have a general question that we got um, actually what? through submission uh, mm -hmm. prior to the event. It's related to this 
you talked about deflecting. Can you talk through like, how do you appropriately do that? Right? Yep. If, if, a, if an individual and employer asks you, so what, you know, tell me what your range is, or could you disclose to me what your salary is at your current place of employment? How do you comfortably deflect that? Sure. So I think that the most respectful way to do that without sounding too deflecty, if that's a word, is to pretty much say, listen, you know, it's not all about salary for me. There is a complete benefit package. So I don't want to necessarily give a range that's not going to be conclusive of all the other benefits that your company may offer. So I would rather maybe see what that looks like first and then circle back on that if the opportunity would. That's great. Thank you. Sure. All right. Any other questions on this? Okay. So just a, a fun little slide here of how common salary negotiation is for new grads. So 62% of people are not negotiating, um, which is, is common, right? So again, you get out of school, you don't think that that's really on the table for you. You know, you're intimidated by maybe getting a new position. So just know that, you know, again, as an employer that is expected, uh, for you to negotiate. So definitely, you know, back to that confidence of going in and, and again, knowing your worth and what you've done. School isn't cheap, guys. You know what I mean? So it's not cheap to go through all the things, you know, the least you could do is definitely, you know, advocate for yourself. Definitely it out. And then there's some statistics over here. 34% of women negotiate, 40% of men negotiate, um, and 90% of employers never retracted an offer because an entry-level candidate tried to negotiate. So, you know, again, once you have that offer in hand, um, you know, there may be a point that both of you walk away from that, but once the offer's in hand, they have designated you as the person that they would like to move into that role. So really the ball kind of falls in your court at that point. So once the offer is made, take a moment to think about the offer, be patient. You don't have to commit right away. Thank you for the offer. I would like a few days to look it over, look over the whole compensation package when you need a decision by. Um, know that every employer pretty much expects this as well. Um, nobody expects. Now, listen, if somebody's offering you your dream job with a salary that you know that you want there, that's already been hit and somebody offers it to you, and you already know the benefits, and you know everything, then by all means, if that's the call you've been waiting for, most definitely. But realistically, you know, if you get this offer, um, it's something that you can very easily say, hey, thank you so much. Um, I'd like a few days to look over everything. Can you send over your benefits? Can you send over something in writing that tells me what the salary will be? Can you send me over something that I can look at and review, you know, with myself or my family or whatever. And when do you need a decision by? I will tell you that every single employer will, they'll give you a deadline, right? They'll probably say, you know what, can we circle back by the end of the week? Or can you let me know by Monday or whatever that looks like? Um, and that's what I would say the biggest thing is, is just to make sure that you're getting back to them by that. Um, you know, certainly there's instances that come up that, you know, if you need a day or two, but just that communication piece, I would say to keep open, um, you know, if you did need more time or something came up just to say like, hey, listen, I'm so sorry. I knew that I told you that I would get back to you by Friday or Monday, but I do need another day or so. Is that OK? Um, and typically that would be just fine. Any questions on this? I do have a question for you, Ashley, as we'll see sure. if anybody else does. So related to this, uh, that whole pause and reflecting, I think that's a, a great suggestion. The question would be if you are, if you receive an offer, a salary offer that perhaps is a little bit lower than you anticipated, do you still suggest pausing and reflecting it at the entire compensation package before you were to, to try to negotiate it? Or would you say immediately try to have the conversation? Where would you suggest in that timeline of pausing and reflecting that you would bring that up to the employer. Yep, very fair. So I would say this, if it is a number that is obviously not where you thought you were going to be, I think that it's very appropriate at that time to say, oh, okay, you know, that seems to be a little bit lower than what I had anticipated, but I would like to take into account the full package. Um, so here is, here is some scenarios. 
um, you know, what's your salary range for the position? And then, you know, you would say, I'm afraid I'll need a little bit more information about the job and the total benefits before I can come up with a number. Um, what is the range of the position previously? You can certainly ask that. Um, you know, we have decided to offer you $30,000 starting out. You can say, that sounds like a good starting place. What can we do to get to 35? Or thank you for the offer. However, it is lower than I anticipated. I would like to understand how your company came to the conclusion of 30,000. Um, I think that that is definitely the place to have that conversation initially. Um, the recruiter or manager may say to you, okay, well, what were you, you know, at that point, what were you hoping for? Um, and then you kind of find out your options from there. Now, I will tell you, there's a lot that goes into certain offers, right? So managers and in compensation, everybody's looking at the full package. Okay, what is your experience? What are your, you know, have you, do you have a special certificate? Do you have something that fits into that? And a lot of times what it is, is they're looking at their internal equity. So if they have people that are, have similar experience that are in the job, they may have you know, their salary that they're locked into. And again, we don't wanna bring in anybody that's gonna be making more than the person who has maybe been there for a year or two. So there's a lot of factors that go into place. And sometimes you know, it's important to have that conversation. So managers and recruiters might say, hey, listen, here's, here's how we came up with it because there's a reason for it, right? Um, not that you sh shouldn't negotiate it. You should say, well, here's what I bring to the table. Here's this, that, and the other thing. Um, and then maybe at that point, the recruiter takes it offline and takes it back to the manager and says, here's what they were hoping for. But in the meantime, I would still ask them, hey, please send me over all your benefits and everything so that I can take a look at it. Um, and then once that final offer is negotiated, so you have offer in hand, it's what you guys you know, had, uh, had agreed on that would be appropriate at that point, even if you need the time you can tell them, you know, hey, can I have a day or two to think about this? So that's where at that point, you would want to say pause and reflect, look at the package as a whole, if you haven't already, um, you know, and kind of go from there. That's good. I appreciate that. And I just want to call out, uh, Ashley's naturally using this one term, have a conversation. She said it multiple times, and I'm catching up on it. So it's, you know, I think oftentimes we think negotiation is very scary. But if you think of it in the light of, I just need to have a, a, an, an honest and authentic conversation with them to tell them where I'm at here. They are trying to figure out the right fit for you too. So I mean, perhaps mm -hmm. we need to change the thought of you're not negotiating, you're just having a conversation about a good starting point for the both of you. So I just wanted right. to underline that and underscore it because you keep naturally using it. Yeah. It's really hitting me that this is just a conversation. It is. It is. And you know what? Here's the thing too you know, and back probably a couple steps to your series this week, and probably people have gone over it, but, you know, your relationship along the way with your recruiter or manager is starting off, you know, they're, they're first seeing your resume, you know, they're, there's highlighting, even before they talk to you, they're, you're, they're seeing who you are on paper, then they're talking to you, they're finding more out about you, they're finding out about all those pieces. So, in even those interviews, that's really your time to shine. You know, there's people worry about, oh, well, I don't want to, you know, come across too confident. That's really your moment to shine of what you can bring to any organization. So I would say be confident in those conversations, you know, be upfront with what you're looking for and, you know, kind of stand by that. You know, there's, listen, sometimes maybe it won't work. Sometimes maybe there's a point where, you know, both of you need to walk away and that's okay, but it is, Thank you, Josh. It is. It's really just a conversation and you just have two people right there. You have two people that are just conversing about, you know, getting, getting you a job. So don't be intimidated by it. And I saw that there was a question in the chat um, regarding unions and we will get to there. There is a slide regarding that in, in the next couple and then we'll talk a little bit more about that if that's okay. Um, so when you're evaluating the opportunity, so naturally calculate your net pay. So gross pay is what your pay is. Net pay is what you take home. So net pay is after all the bells and whistles come out, that's that's what that looks like. So, you know, look at that, what your take home pay would be. Um, you know, and again, be honest with your recruiter about your expectations. And here's the thing, from a recruiter standpoint, a recruiter wants to get you the job. 
right? A recruiter is one of those people that they're not a roadblock. They are there to help and assist you. And their main goal and their main focus is to get you hired. Okay, so it's okay to be honest with your expectations with your recruiter. Ask questions. You know, we don't know what we don't know, right? So, um, you know, it's always important to, if you think of something, ask it, even if it's after the time frame. So let's say that you're in between that waiting stage of, hey, I'll get back to you Friday and more things come up, always, always reach out and ask those questions. Um, again, be willing to walk away, but never burn a bridge, right? So you don't know, you never know where your life will take you and you never know what circumstances will change. Um, there may be opportunities that, you know, you say, well, right now that salary doesn't look right. Um, but then you go and you're like, but I really like that company. And then you go get a little bit of experience and you come back maybe in a different role that's set you up for that success. So you never know where things are going to take you. So don't ever burn a bridge. But it is sometimes, don't think that because you walked away from an offer that that door is completely shut because that's sometimes a misconception that is not true. Um, and always say thank you and have an attitude of gratitude. Um, you know, it's one of those things, again, you know, show your authentic self, um, you know, be grateful, obviously, for any opportunity um, that comes your way and keep your options open, you know, but obviously be courteous to everyone as you go. Okay, so here's a little bit about where I think the union piece would come into play. So salaries vary by company and industry. Um, some companies and industries, you know, have set compensation packages. So what if a salary is non-negotiable? I know that we deal with this a lot in the hospital setting, that we do have union hospitals, and that is the case. Um, there are set guidelines of rates that are non-negotiable. Um, I will tell you that most recruiters and hiring managers in that instance are going to tell you probably at the time of talking to them what the pay is. Um, Usually in a union environment, it's every year on a certain date that they have increases. So, you know, you'll be bumped up to the next mark. So I know that a lot of times in union spaces, for instance, we have a union that, you know, they renegotiate their contract in July. So no matter when you start, every July there is an increase. So it's important to ask kind of those types of questions. Um, and again, there's other benefits to obviously consider, you know, paid time off, um, tuition assistance and reimbursement, any kind of further education, vacation days. So some of those things may be negotiable, which, you know, again, sometimes it doesn't always have to be the compensation piece. Um, there's other things in there that can be, you know, a benefit. Um, entertaining more than one offer can be an advantage in negotiating. So I will tell you this, if you're looking for a job, you're probably looking down multiple avenues, right? There's probably, you know, if you're going on Indeed and you see, oh my gosh, like there's three jobs I'm really interested in. Um, you know, you talk to all three companies and, and sometimes, you know, having that fight over you for lack of, of a better term can be beneficial because, you know, you can go back to maybe your first choice and say, hey, listen, I was just offered a job at, you know, somewhere else and they're willing to pay me this, um, you know, and it's okay to tell them like, listen, I'm very interested in your company and I would like to see how we get there because, you know, you would be my first option. I think that's more than fair to say. And again, sometimes they can do it and sometimes they can't. And any recruiter is going to be honest with you about that and, and respect that obviously that, you know, Listen, again, recruiter's job is to get you in the door. So they're going to do, if they can do it, they're going to do it. They'll go back to the hiring manager and, and the compensation team and, you know, they'll advocate for you to see what they can do. So just something to keep in mind. Any questions on this slide? All right. So evaluating benefits, um, they have a monetary value. So worth up, about, up to about 30% of your total compensation um, consider what is most important to you. You know, what is covered as far, even if you're looking at medical, dental, and vision, right? What is covered? What is the cost share? What kind of plans? Um, some benefits may not be negotiable. So, you know, certain healthcare companies, they may have a um, separate contract with an insurance company that they can't really get out of as far as benefit pay and all that stuff goes. But vacation days might be something that you can negotiate. So I will tell you that it's very important if you are taking benefits 
to look at that bottom line of what would come out of your paycheck, right? Because sometimes even if, you're, if your pay is a little bit higher, but the benefits are going to cost you more. You know what I mean? So it, it doesn't always even out. So very, very important to look at kind of what your bottom line would be. Okay. Okay. So other types of benefits. So there's 401k, um, you know, medical, dental, and vision, life and disability insurance, vacation, PTO, bonuses, tuition reimbursement and assistance, um, the op opportunity to work from home, um, employee assistance program, child care, free food, gym passes. So each company comes with their own set of benefits too that might be a little bit, um, you know, really weigh into what you're looking for. Every individual is looking for something a little bit different. Some some people, the salary isn't the most important thing. Sometimes it's the family benefit plan that they can enroll in. Sometimes it's having the PTO and the flexibility to be able to go places and do things and work from home. So really kind of you have to look at it on an individual basis of really what's in it for you. I think that's a really good point, right? Like what do you value as an individual? Because you comparing this compensation package to a diff another individual can be very different. So to Ashley's point, if you're starting a family or you appreciate the opportunity to travel and you have more vacation days, maybe that means more to you than what a particular salary could be. And I think Ashley brought up a great point before having conversations and helping students or recent graduates go through this, you know, you might have a higher salary, but you're going to be cost paying more in terms of insurance. So visually you might be attracted to what that figure looks like, but comparing that to a different offer that is a little bit less in salary, but the benefit package is better, right? That you've got to be able to look at them comparatively just to make sure. So I think that was a great point, Ashley. Yeah, thank you. And and obviously too, and, and if you're thinking about too where you're going, other things to take into consideration, <clears throat> excuse me, do you have to pay to park somewhere? Um, do you have to buy, you know, a specific type of uniform to wear or whatever that looks like? So all of those things are important to consider. Um, again, with considerations with healthcare, I think we touched on this a little bit, you know, how are deductibles and co-pays and co-insurance and premiums pays? Um, you know, how extensive is the healthcare provider's network? So is a doctor that you love still in network with your new insurance plan? Um, do they offer an HSA or FSA account? That is just like a flex spending account that is, you know, money that you put in every month that gets uploaded onto almost like a company debit card that you can use for co-pays and things like that. Um, and the biggest thing, guys, is the retirement. So, you know, a lot of us <clears throat> don't necessarily think about that right now since it's money that we would see later. But imagine when you're retiring and you have this beautiful retirement package because along the way you had an employer that matched your 401k, right? So that is essentially free money. I will tell you on my soapbox that if you are able to and you're working for any or somebody that does, you know, a match 401k, put in the most amount that you can. So contribute the highest amount that you can, because again, you're going to get the most reward out of that in, in the background. Um, you know, so 401k equals free cash. Sometimes companies do 100% match. Sometimes they do a, you know, 4% match or whatever that looks like. Um, but most companies do a match. And to kind of give a tangible example of that, imagine, right? If the, if the company says you have to put in 5% and we'll give you 5%, well, maybe 5% of your pay is, let's make it easy, $200. That means you're putting $200 and they're willing to say, I'm going to put $200 because you did too. That's the free piece that Ashley's talking about. So your retirement, instead of just doing 200 is getting 400 And that's significant over the life of your career because the only thing you never get back is time. So the more time that you have to invest in retirement, theoretically, fingers crossed, the more money you'll have at retirement if all things play true. So a couple of high level terms here, and Diane has been good about putting things in the chat, but I think as you see the tip at the bottom of the screen, if you got a question, ask the question, right? That's the most important thing. And it could vary by company as, as Ashley has said. Yeah, most definitely. And honestly, and that tip at the bottom, you know, if you're offered a benefit that you don't understand, 
you know, contact human resources or the benefits department or talk to your recruiter a little bit about that to help explain. Sometimes those benefits and those things get a little bit tricky and confusing, um, especially when you're not used to looking at them all the time. You know, in HR, we're kind of used to living in that world. But if you don't see, you know, HSA or FSA, you know, those type of little acronyms and things that you don't know what they mean, you know, don't ever hesitate to ask because there is somebody that can help you understand that a little bit more. All right, so at this time, this concludes the, the formal presentation of the financial piece, but we want to open up for questions and allow some informal conversations to happen if anybody has any particular questions. But I, I also want to say, um, Ashley and Brooke will then talk about career opportunities with their organization. And at the end of the presentation, there'll be a QR code for them if you want to sign up to get more information from them. So stick around for sure after Q&A to take a listen to what they have to say about their organization, if that's of interest to you, and then we'll get you on their mailing list. So if there are any specific questions for Ashley or Brooke, this is the time to definitely ask them. So we'll, we'll give you an opportunity to do that. Josh, should we show the QR code to check in for those who came after that slide? Absolutely. Yeah, it's a maybe, great idea. Maybe we want to do that also at this time for those who came in um, after that first slide. Yep, there you go. So to just make sure that you get credit for the session, please go ahead and check in using this QR code. Uh, and then again, if you have any questions for Ashley and Brooke, this is the time to, to ask away. Oh, hi, this is Kate Collin. Sorry, I had to jump off real quick to pick up my daughter, but um, I had a question. I'm not sure if it's been addressed. I'm an active, uh, the spouse of an active duty army officer, and we receive full medical benefits. Um, how do I build that into a salary negotiation? Very good question. So. It is always really good to ask the employer if they give credit if you do not take benefits. So there are some companies that do it. Some companies don't. Um, some companies that have that, you know, contract with the insurance company, they can't waive that. Um, but some companies may give you that option that if you're not taking you know, benefits that they can renegotiate that into your offer. So always a very fair question to ask. Thank you so much. That's You're very welcome. helpful. Sure. Any other questions? I can just add to that, Kate, that I'm aware of a situation where a spouse was able to provide those medical benefits and the, the employer said, although I can't give you more income, um, even though you're saving us income, what I can do is offer you more paid time off. So they were able to earn some more vacation days um, since they were saving them that um, the, the, the cost of that benefit. That's a great idea. Thank you. So I saw that there was one that came through it said, what is the best approach to ask for a raise? So I would say, you know, that typically comes when you're already working, right? So, you know, most organizations are going to have check-ins or touch points with your manager or leader. Um, and I would say, you know, if you know that you're meeting or exceeding the expectations of the job, um, you know, or if there are certain tasks that have been assigned to you that are maybe a little bit out of the scope of your of your work and you're taking them on and you're always kind of going above and beyond and you notice that for yourself, um, you know, it's it's always fair to to have that conversation and ask, you know, for that. Again, it may not be plausible, it may not happen. I would say probably the best time to ask for that is probably at review time. So when you have that, you know, most places do annual reviews and, um, you know, if it's one of those things that you can kind of work towards, I would recommend having that conversation around that time, um, you know, of the performance review. And obviously some of those conversations along the way, you know, sometimes it's good to bring those things up as you're meeting with your manager and as you're talking with them so that they know what your expectations are and they might be able to help you get there. See, they might say, listen, 
we can't give this to you right now unwarranted, but here's how we can potentially look at that. Let's give you X, Y, and Z to complete, or here's these things that we'd like to see you advance and move towards that, that would almost prove your case. Um, so obviously just keeping that door open and having those honest conversations along the way. Um, and then hopefully by the time that that performance eval would come, then the both of you know, and it's not a surprise, kind of what you're looking for, um, it's kind of to be expected. It goes back to how getting that in writing, right? It kind of, here's the, right. the plan to get to you that next step. Right. Here's your, here's the process you can go through and prove it to right. me. Exactly. Uh, Mel, I think I saw you had a question. Do you, do, was your question answered or do you still have a question? Um, it was more of just commenting I, to share an experience of, I've always had great supervisors who've as I've progressed through my career have, have encouraged me to negotiate. Um, so I've been pretty good about doing that, but I've definitely been in a lot of government jobs or union jobs. And often I find you, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you're gonna start where you're gonna start. But along the lines of your advice of um, checking in after, like if that's a salary you have to take, um, I went through an interview process, got hired, I tried to negotiate, it didn't work out, but I let my supervisor know when I started what they made me start at, and she was appalled, <laughs> and she worked really diligently, like she understood what I need to do in merit steps and things like that to get me up to where they thought I really was with my experience, so it really, like, Josh called out, like having that conversation, being open, like I've seen that's really worked. I've seen it work. I think if your supervisor in particular is excited to have you and wants you to stay, they're going to do whatever they can to, to help you be uh, paid at the experience level that you are. Most definitely, most definitely, Mel. And you know what? And the good supervisors out there are the ones that are looking to grow their team and give them those opportunities. So let's say that you're starting off in an entry level role of some sort. Um, you know, there may be ways to advance your career to even up a ladder. It may not even, you know, it might not be with just the salary. It may come with a title change. It may come with some different avenues of some, you know, growth within that company um, that once you have a little bit of experience under your belt, you're saying, hey, listen, I'm ready for that next step. So, you know, good supervisors and managers out there, Mel, to your point, they're seeing your potential and they're helping you get to that next step and helping you move through, you know, that, that ladder, I should say. Appreciate you sharing that, Mel. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. So any other questions for Ashley or Brooke before we get into more opportunities with their company? Anything in the chat, Diana? Are we good? We good? Okay. So go ahead, Ashley. Brooke, we'll let you take it away and uh, about more opportunities. Sounds good. So as we said before, so we are with the Allegheny Health Network here in Pittsburgh. Um, we have 10 hospitals. So as you can see on the screen here, um, I won't bore you with going through every single one of them because you can see them there, but, you know, they're over the span of Pittsburgh and surrounding areas. Um, you know, we do have St. Vincent Hospital up in Erie um, and Westfield Hospital in Westfield, New York, which is a very small hospital, but nonetheless, it is ours. Um, go ahead, Josh, if you want to advance that. And then we also have the Allegheny Clinic. So those are going to be your doctor's offices and things like that. That's probably the easiest way to put that, but over 400 practice locations. So we are spread out. <laughs> we have a lot. I'm sure you see the logo and you recognize, you recognize the company. So we are throughout the area. So if you are interested in a uh, position with us, you know, you could take a look. So at the top of the screen there, you could type that into your URL um, and look at, it, look at it that way. The cool thing is, is that if you're looking for a particular job and you don't see that it's listed, you can sign up for alerts that, you know, with the keywords, it'll send you over a message that says, hey, this job is available and it meets what you're, the criteria that you're looking for. Um, because it's kind of a pain to have to go on every day and say, oh, I wonder if this job's posted. So that way it's kind of automated and it'll send it over to you. Um, 
And again, that has all of our featured, there's featured careers out there. There's, you know, all of our jobs are listed on that page. Um, don't be surprised that whenever you go to the page, it will say Highmark Health up there. Um, you know, as many of you know, AHN is an entity of Highmark Health. So just so you, that you're aware of that, you are going to go to the right place. Um, you know, when you type in that URL, it will route you to the Highmark Health landing page. Um, and that's where all of our Highmark and AHN positions are located. Ashley or Brooke, could you talk through the variety of different majors, perhaps? Like most people think of healthcare, they probably think of the traditional doctor, nurse, but are there other opportunities with AHN that maybe aren't those what we would think of traditional in the healthcare system? There are, most definitely. And I will tell you that um, specifically, I think more so on the Highmark side, um, I mean, my goodness, we're hiring for IT folks, project managers, marketing, branding, um, HR. So there's a whole gamut of opportunities, uh, you know, within both companies that I think that, you know, we could definitely explore. At the hospital level, I can tell you that, you know, they hire, you know, maintenance folks, police officers, they're, you know, administrative people. So there are a whole gamut of jobs. I think at both. Okay, yeah, and it's case sensitive. That is that is correct. So yeah, so there is um, a. These things are always so cool that you could put your phone right up to it, and it'll automatically. Technology has just advanced so much. Um, so if you are interested in joining our talent community, um, you know sometimes we do send out messaging and different opportunities. Feel free to you know put that on your screen and sign up for that. Um, and then there's the um, email address at the bottom that if you do have additional questions, even after this session, or if you're interested in hearing more, if there's a position that you're interested in that you want to hear more about, you can certainly email us over um, and one of us will most certainly get back to you as well. And Brooke, is there anything that you wanted to add? I don't want to take over the whole part of it. <laughs> Yeah, no, you pretty much covered everything, Ashley. So thank you for that. I um, just want to call out too, if you guys do scan this QR code, like Ashley said, you'll be entered into our system, which means you'll get all of our latest um, communications. If there's anything really large that we want to communicate to you, this is the way that we'll do it. Um, but in addition to that, you'll also get a follow-up email from myself. So that way you'll have my email, I'll have yours, and we can communicate one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so I can help answer any questions that you have or even help you search for jobs on our career site. Uh, really, you know, whatever you're looking for, we can provide that assistance. And I just did a quick search and found 84 matching jobs using the keyword marketing, um, over 30 using the word accountant, uh, 40 over 40 using psychology. So as they said, it's all majors, not just nurses and doctors. Okay, so take a look at our um age awesome. yep Thanks, and we're just looking we're looking for good people and i promise we have good recruiters too we have a good team and people that won't eat you up i promise <laughs> so we'll have good conversations with you and we'll keep that line of communication and guess what if you do apply for a job with us and anybody's telling you something different tell them ashley roberts came here and presented to us and told me that i'm allowed to do this <laughs> That's perfect. Well, we sincerely appreciate you, Ashley uh, and Brooke. Thank you for taking the time with us and uh, giving us such good knowledge today. So uh, as Brooke said, feel free to scan that. We should be able to follow up with you uh, and continue the journey with this particular organization. But if you all have any questions related to the series or uh, any assistance that you may need in your career related, you can always email career at PennWest. Dot edu or visit our website at career.penwest.edu and we'll be in touch with you. But this concludes the particular session today. So we appreciate you being here and hopefully we see you tomorrow at the next session. So thank you. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. Thanks everyone.